Hello everyone, it's your bud. In today's video, I'm not going to be talking about sci-fi or fantasy. Today, I'm going to be talking about copyright. Now, a few things I want to clarify just before I get into this. Number one, this is not going to be a comprehensive list of everything to do with copyright, just a few ideas that I was thinking up last night. And number two, my battery is dying as usual, so if this cuts in edits, then you understand why. So I watched Tom Scott's video about copyright last night. Now, I've been so busy making videos for you that I haven't had time to watch all of the videos online that I usually do. So I was a week late to his copyright video, so this response might be a bit late, but I thought I'd discuss my idea with copyright and my experience with it. I've been making YouTube video for, let's see, since 2014, I believe. So yeah, six years now, uh, not very long compared to some other people, but long enough that I've been hit with many different copyright claims. Um, and these claims are for legitimate reasons and for illegitimate reasons, which I will be discussing. So I will be discussing some of the flaws in YouTube's copyright system. We'll be discussing this sometimes relating to YouTube and sometimes just in general. This is gonna be a broad overview of what I believe copyright can influence others to do and the impact that it can have and how if we don't curtail the impact or like grow it in a certain way that it could overgrow the system that we have in place for it. So I've had a number of YouTube channels. I've had one for video games, one for music that I've had since 2014, both of those, and then also one for my pets, and then one that I like re-edited trailers and like did some re-edit cool edit stuff like that. And then I started this new channel in November, end of November, and I've been doing daily uploads since then. Now I've had a number of claims which I will discuss later, but now let's discuss just the whole theme of copyright. I believe copyright boils down to a few things and I have a big list here of a bunch of stuff. Let's see, a bunch of notes, a bunch of just like talking points. Now, as I said, this isn't scripted. If I was gonna be doing a script, then I couldn't be looking at the camera and I think this video would benefit from me looking at the camera and actually talking to you. But I will be referencing my script and some few things online. So number one, let's discuss what a meme is. A meme is an idea, behavior, or style that spreads the means of imitation. Remember that, imitation. From person to person within a culture. So say I went, whoa, what's up, dude? And then someone said, whoa, what's up, dude? That's a meme. It's an imitation. And that's the most cheesy imitation that I could actually do there, but hey, that's what came to mind. So often with the aim of conveying a particular phenomenon, theme or meaning represented by the meme. So a meme can be transformative, but mostly it is a means of imitation from within the culture to more people within the culture. So a meme is an idea, it's a behavior, it's this, I don't know, it's just thing that propagates. And then here's another thing, we're gonna go in a completely random direction here, but corporation free speech. So in America, there's something called corporate personhood. The First Amendment gave corporations the right to free speech because they are associations of citizens. So if a corporation can have free speech and a corporation can then, let's say, Disney make something popular, Disney makes something, and then Baby Yoda, Baby Yoda becomes a meme. Does the corporation's free speech cover the fact that meme was created? Is a meme its own thing? So you can see how this is really unscripted. I'm just going to be hitting on a few points and I'm going to do a kind of more broad overview before I really dive into the topics as I don't know how long the battery will last here. So I'm just going to do some overviews right now. And then when I know I have some good battery life, I will get into the details here. So a meme is something that needs to evolve. It needs to propagate. It needs to be free. I think in order to be a true meme, it has to have free speech. So I think there should be free meme speech. If corporations can get free speech, then I think memes should get free speech. And I don't know if free speech is the right word here, but eh. Also, this is another thing I could hit on a really, really touchy topic here potentially, but myth and religion. So when I was learning about religion, I was learning about chaos and Nyx and Zeus and the Greek pantheon. And I kind of learned that there was this idea of chaos and darkness that was like consolidated into chaos. That was one of the gods, but there's also another thing that was consolidated into this darkness and night and sleep, and that was Nyx. And Nyx and chaos kind of represented the same idea, and when they came together to like actually create, so the pantheon wasn't create. Pantheon wasn't created in a day, and I know I'm discussing Greek pantheons here, but you can basically say Rome wasn't built in a day. Well pantheons of religions weren't built in a day. They're built by iterations. Iteration after iteration, rendition after rendition. So the last thing I'm going to be discussing with religion is Kali. 
So Kali is an aspect. Kali is probably one of the more famous goddesses that you probably will know about. You see her image, it's quite an unforgettable image there. Kali is an aspect. She is the leader of the Mahavidya, and the Mahavidya are aspects. They are ten aspects of the goddess Parvati. So they are ten aspects in Hinduism. And the way that works is like, say the god was power. Well, what's the aspects of power? And there are different aspects. And Kali is an aspect of Parvati. And so Kali is the goddess of time, creation, destruction, and power. But Kali was an aspect of another god. So I'm just discussing the pantheons of gods here, just so you can understand how memes evolve. So I don't know when I started thinking of corporations as churches and religions as pop culture and memes. However, I think there's a great relation between the two. The fact that a corporation can control the memes that evolve from their content is very similar to the way that a church would control the way that worshippers worship. Is it right for the church, meaning the corporations, to hold complete control forever of these ideas? So now that you understand that I basically think that corporations have become the churches of the modern day mythology and religion of pop culture, then let's discuss copyright. So I'm going to start with one example here, Spider-Man. Spider-Man was created in August of 1962. Now if you go by just the creation of the idea and you do, let's say, 50 years, then Spider-Man would be a free thing that we could all write stories about. However, if you go by one of the people that created that idea, Stan Lee, who just died in 2018, and then you do 50 years after death, that would mean that Spider-Man cannot be manipulated or created or added onto by anyone until 2068. So do you believe that Spider-Man should be free for everyone to use because it's been 50 years since it was created? Or do you believe that we should have to wait till 2068, which is 50 years after Stanley's death? And I know there was someone else who helped create it, but I haven't looked it up. So I'm just doing a short video. So that's just for an example. So do you think there should be a cutoff 50 years after the creator's death or after the idea was created? So the way it is now for a corporation, they get after death plus 90 years, I believe. So whether you believe that copyright should end 50 years after the idea was created, 50 years after the creator dies, or 90 years after the creator dies, there's a whole bunch of things that copyright could apply to that could make life very, very fun for you and I in the future. So imagine if in the next 20 or 30 years, such things came to be free for everyone to add on to. Games like paper and pen games, video games, war gaming like Warhammer, stuff like that, or card games. So you could have Dungeons and Dragons, which was created in the 70s. You could have Call of Duty and Mario, or 40K and Warhammer, or Magic the Gathering, Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! They could all enter the public domain. Could you imagine if anyone could make a public domain Call of Duty game? Or anyone could make, hey, this is my D&D official thing. This is my new 40K army. So 40K is something that can actually be used until like another few decades, but Hey, that's the idea, is what about things like that? What about Wargaming or 40k? What about D&D, the paper and pen games? What about Mario or Magic the Gathering, Call of Duty, Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh? What if all of those entered the public domain 50 years after the idea was created or 50 years after the creator dies? I would very much love a world that my children could grow up in, where my children could, if they really, really were fans of these, they could, I don't know, make any of these things and just add to the public domain. This all comes back to pop culture and sort of the modern myth. So we'll go over to Star Wars now because that is a wonderful example that everyone knows. Star Wars came out in the 70s. George Lucas is still alive. So do you believe Star Wars should enter the public domain 50 years after it was created in 77, 50 years after whenever George Lucas dies, or 90 years after whenever Disney bought the license. I'm not 100% sure. There's some very, very weird things. And in order to discuss how the copyright claim can be infinitely passed down, I'm going to be discussing a game that you might not have thought of. It's a game that very, very, very much embodies this whole copyright claim system, Monopoly. Monopoly came out in 1935. So Monopoly is about as old as my grandma, and yet Monopoly is not something that's in the public domain as far as I'm aware. 
yet everyone should be able to just make a Monopoly game, shouldn't they? It's as old as my grandma, and yet it's not in the public domain? That seems very, very odd. So there are things that are kept out of the public domain through these weird, weird loopholes. Things like Happy Birthday, Monopoly, Superman and Spider-Man, all these things that should be pop culture. Star Wars, I mean, I can understand Star Wars not entering pop culture until 50 years after George Lucas dies. But the best example, I think, is Star Wars, the expanded universe of Star Wars. George Lucas was smart enough to allow the expanded universe to happen. He allowed basically the public domain to be the public domain, even though he was the copyright holder. So this all boils down to the fact that corporations are churches and their content or pop culture that they help facilitate is now the religion that they're like trying to control how we worship it. And I don't think that's right. I believe that memes so I have my main points here are one, let memes evolve, which requires freedom, and freedom equals collective commons. So collective commons I think is kind of the best copyright, although I'm kind of on the opposite side of it. And then, I'll explain in a moment or two. And then two, you either let individuals control memes or you let pop culture control memes. That's basically it. Well, you let an individual control memes and pop culture and that individual can be a corporation because remember, corporations get free speech. So that corporation could be the individual. So a church controlling worship is one thing, but an individual or a free speech corporation controlling memes and pop culture just seems so wrong. Now here's the real kick in the pants that I think everyone needs. Patents only last 20 years. So it sounds like my apartment gardener just started, so hopefully you can't hear that too much, but let's continue on. So yeah, patents only last for 20 years, which I think is much too short for intellectual property. However, if I had the cure for cancer and I knew it, and 20 years went by and I didn't do anything about it, it would enter public domain and everyone could use it. For example, when I looked up um, Collective Commons today, so the first thing that happened when I looked up Collective Commons today is, well, I actually can't say it, but the health crisis that's happening in the world as of of March 2020, which will be very apparent in the future, but I can't say it because this will get demonetized. But Creative Commons is helping for everyone working together in the healthcare system. They're creating ideas, they're working, they're collaborating, and it's really, really beneficial. And I think that system should enter the, I don't know, the whole nerdy pop culture domain. I think if anyone could make a Darth Vader story 50 years after George Lucas dies, that would be great. If anyone could make a Superman story because it's been so long, or a Spider-Man story, I think that's how it should be. Now, I think I've said most of the main points that I want to, which are that corporations are basically churches, and they're being very strict about the worship of pop culture, and that memes are basically something that require freedom to evolve. You can't have a meme be a meme in a stagnant place where an individual or a corporation controls pop culture. That just doesn't work. And memes is a very, I don't know, hot button topic here with a GIF or stuff like that. A meme can never really be understood whether it's copyright infringement or not, because it's imitation and imitation isn't I don't know, imitation isn't transformative, it isn't educational, it isn't anything that falls under copyright, but imitation is what I believe creates this whole, I don't know, like how religion and aspects came to be, like Kali wouldn't be Kali if there wasn't a god to become an aspect of. And I think there's so much that we're missing out on having public domain become a pop culture thing that just gets added onto again and again and again. However, I do not think the 20 year patent thing is applicable for intellectual property Property. Now there's a few reasons here. Number one, so let's say that I created an amazing song and I wanted to live on it till my dying days. And then in a few years, I eventually developed a mental problem where I could no longer work. So if there was only a 20 year cutoff for copyright and I was no longer able to work, then I would no longer be able to claim the money and start claiming videos online. Hey, you're using my song. Hey, you're using my song. I couldn't do that for more than 20 years. So I don't think that counts. So I don't think that's really fair. I think it should be at least 50 years. And that way people can have at least a full life of claiming the content they made. So if you created it, if you performed it, if you did that, then I think you should be able to do the copyright claims for 50 years. Now, I am on the opposite side of this for a few reasons here. I have a photographer for a dad, a painter for a mom, and a fashion designer for a sister. So if anyone ripped off any of their work, 
I would feel very, very insulted and angry and upset. And you may have noticed my music in the background of these videos. I'm a musician, I have been for most of my life, and I try to really make music and put it on YouTube. However, I've been noticing a lot of really fraudulent claims on YouTube. Now, there are a very difficult thing where it is illegal to do covers unless you actually get the rights to do a cover. You have to get a license to do that. So as far as music and licensing goes, there's a whole bundle of things you can talk about. For example, if you do a cover of a song, you get hit with a composition claim. So even if it's a different tempo, a different key, if you use the same words over the same chords, it's a composition claim. However, there are many other claims that just if it sounds similar or if it's kind of similar, they'll notice. But one of the most upsetting to me is the fact that whoever gets their song into the... Now this is heading into a bit of a rant. We'll return to this stuff in a moment or two, the whole patent cut off and deadline for copyright. But I really, really want to get like, I really want to rant about this because I made a cover of Bonnie Tyler's Hero. You know, I need a hero. And that's all I'm going to sing because I don't want to get this cut off. But that song there, I made a cover of it and I put it online. And I was like, I don't care if Bonnie Tyler takes all the money from this video. She deserves it. It's an awesome song. I want to make a hero animated video with my hero anime. So I did that, I put it online, and guess who I get a claim from? So if you know that song, I'm holding out for a hero, you'll know there's a line that goes, where have all the heroes gone? However, the copyright claim that I got on the cover of Bonnie Tyler's song was called, where did all the good songs go parody? So since Bonnie Tyler made her song in the 80s and the copyright claim system hadn't been invented yet for her to upload her song into, the parody cover called Where Have All The Good Songs Gone is claiming my cover of Bonnie Tyler's song. And the only way for me to contact YouTube and let them know that I'm getting claimed by a parody which is fraudulently claiming my song, which is a cover of a different song. The only way for me to do that is to click a button saying, yes, I own the rights to this song, or yes, I have gotten a license from Bonnie Tyler to do my own cover, which of course I haven't. And the only legal way that I can communicate with YouTube and let them know that I'm doing that is by clicking a button that says, Will you dispute that you own the rights to this content? Or I have licensed the rights to this content, which I don't. And underneath in small print, it says, if you do this knowing that you do not own the content, you may have your entire channel deleted. So the only way for me to let YouTube know that a parody is claiming my cover of Bonnie Tyler's song is to say that I own Bonnie Tyler's song and my cover version of it, which I don't. I was doing a cover of Bonnie Tyler's song, so therefore Bonnie Tyler should get the money and claim my video. However, the parody is claiming my cover of Bonnie Tyler's song, and the only way for me to let YouTube know that the parody is claiming me is by saying that I own my cover of a song, which I don't, because it's a cover of a song which Bonnie Tyler should get the claim for. And that's what I deal with constantly. The other day I uploaded a bunch of covers, and let's see, I uploaded a bunch of covers all together end to end, so they kind of overlapped, one would end right when the other started and I put like six or seven songs in there yet I got like more claims than I did songs because some of like when the songs would overlap it'd be like oh we know this song we know this song hey those overlap and they sound like another song therefore there's three copyright strikes on only two songs I mean what the hell <laughs> copyright strikes are coming in from like random languages random countries all over the world just to claim my videos and sometimes they're parody covers of a song from the 80s and yet the parody cover is claiming my video and making money off of me and the only way for me to notify YouTube that they're doing that is by making something clicking a button that says if I click this button without owning the content my entire channel can be deleted I mean what <laughs> is crazy so Monopoly came out in 1935 and whether you believe that it should enter like public domain 50 years after it was created or 50 years after the creators died I think that's a really good example Monopoly Star Wars let's see like imagine a future where your children or you in like 50 years could make a Call of Duty game and just add to the Call of Duty series just make a new Mario game yeah here's my Mario game Mario by BC Bud welcome to Mario by BC Bud it's public domain now wouldn't that be awesome Mickey soups Palpy Star Wars Star Trek D&D Warhammer Call of Duty, Mario, happy birthday. <laughs> so just think about how the aspects of like religion change. Like religion couldn't be religion if it didn't change and have aspects of like, oh, this God is the God of this. Oh, but the aspect of that God is this and that becomes worshiped and that becomes a God. Memes like evolve and memes are like 
pop culture, and then pop culture is sort of like the modern myth. Everyone, everyone loves referring to like, oh, Star Wars is the modern myth. Well, if Star Wars is the modern myth, then it should be something for the people. So my main points are: let memes evolve, which requires freedom, and that would be best described with the collective commons model. Or two, you either let individuals control memes. Or you let culture control memes. What do you think is best? Do you think culture and just the mob influence should get control over your precious art that you created? I certainly wouldn't want people ripping off my songs. I'm not rich enough to like hire someone to legally get my songs into the claim system. I know there's ways to do that, but generally, the cheaper you can get your music into the claim system, the more rights you have to give away. So if I wanted to get all my original music into the claim system for free, I'd have to find someone who would want to do that, and the only person that would want to do that for me, a distributor, would probably be like, "Well, we'll do it for free, but give us some of the, you know, give us a little bit off the top, and we'll be happy too." So that's the only way you can get your stuff into the copyright claim system. I can't just be like, "Hey, I made this. It's in the copyright. It's mine," because I could rip off something from a hundred years ago and be claiming it fraudulently. You need to be represented by. A distributor. You're not even privileged enough, so I can't get my stuff onto YouTube unless I sign up with the distributor. And generally, I have not found one where you can get it for free, and you can keep all your rights. So you either have to pay money, which I don't have, or you have to give up part of the rights or give up part of the money, and then that way you can get your stuff onto YouTube. So if I use my original songs in a music video, and someone just rips the whole song and puts it into claim system because they can afford to, then they can claim all of my music and all. Of my videos, and I would hate that. What if someone started claiming my father's, my father's photos, my mother's art, my sister's fashion? What about all of that? We're all like, we're all entrepreneurs, so we all make our own content: photography, art, fashion, and I make、uh, videos online and music and stuff like that. So we all make our own stuff. However, I don't know. I believe that. I was just so this is all just because of Tom Scott. So screw you, Tom Scott, for making me make this video. I was happy last night, being like, oh, whatever the claim system. If it hits me again, I'll just make a different video. So I wasn't gonna talk about this, but Tom Scott made that video, and it just made me like, oh, there's so many things about free speech and about memes and how they evolve. And I've always thought like memes and pop culture were very similar to like. I don't know modern religion and how corporations are becoming like these strict thing and like oh you can't worship Mickey Mouse unless you do this and that do the do the this dance do the that dance I don't know I hate it so much but imagine a world imagine a world where you can just be like here is BC Buds D and D here is BC Buds Call of Duty here is BC Buds Pokemon Yu Gi Oh Magic the Gathering so the whole thing about patents only lasting twenty years is they encourage development and they dissuade laziness and they're There is nothing to do that for corporations who have free speech to have rights and all of this and memes, the pop culture, the I don't know, the very trade and soul of what we have, like the soul of pop culture, is held by the people that create it. Which, a, as a creator, I think should happen. I don't want people stealing my music or my mom's paintings or my dad's art or my sister's fashion. I don't want that to happen. I don't even know if I want that to happen 50 years after my parents die. If 50 years after my parents die, like they worked so hard on that and they did it not only for themselves to make money, they did it for their children and for their children. That's just the way the world works. So to take that away from them, I don't know. It seems almost wrong. Yet to let. Big corporations keep like parading all of their things around, and oh, we just bought Star Wars, therefore Star Wars won't enter public domain. It was I don't know. I just, what do you think? <laughs> do you think public domain should evolve like the expanded universe for Star Wars, where you just add to it, you keep adding to it, and hopefully the creators are generous enough to allow that? Or do you think there should be very, very strict control? So the person making that Avatar game online right now that's getting like lots of views. I've been, I've been watching that. Like every once in a while, I'll check in and see what that Avatar game's looking like. Imagine if by the time that guy's done the game, Avatar has entered public domain and he can just be like, "Here's my Avatar game." So, do you want a world where public domain allows everyone to have the freedom, or do you want individuals to control pop culture? What do you think? This has been a weird rant. I'm on one side, being a musician and having all my family create art that I think—I mean—they're very proud of that art. I'm very proud of my art and what I can create, and I don't want people abusing it. Yet, I also really want things like Call of Duty or Star Wars, or let's see—I mean, imagine if you could make new things like、uh, Pokemon or something, which would be 20 like 40-ish, or I don't know. 
Uh, that seems far away, but it's really not. It's really not that far away. All these things, all your favorite things could be entering public domain. Or they could all stay with the corporations who make the worship of them very, very strict and very orderly. And then you get these like split ups of religions. Oh, we're the Calvinists, we're the Protestants, we're the this, we're the that, <laughs> we're the Catholics, we're all of this. And then you have that for pop culture. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of what it's like right now. But I can imagine a fracturing of pop culture even more, or just this wide open public domain freedom that we could live in in the future. What do you think would be better? Do you think full freedom of copyright and interest? intellectual right should be allowed or full control should go to the person that created it. I'm, I'm very, very unsure. As a creator, I want full control, but as a creator who just lives on the internet, I also want to just create new things from all the amazing things that I love. So I'm so confused. What do you think is the right thing to do? So of course the camera just died right at the end here. I'm going to maybe do a little brief overview. I might be repeating a few things a few times, but I don't know how much the camera just cut off. I was partway through my mindset and I said everything I wanted to say and then I looked and the camera had stopped working. So yeah. So my broad overview is you either let memes evolve, which requires freedom, and that would be like the collective commons model, or you let individuals control memes, and corporations who have free speech would be the individuals kind of, so a corporation or whatever. I don't know, I, it's, it's very, very difficult. As a creator whose parents make art, whose sister makes art, I make art, I would hate for people to rip off everything that I created, yet I want people to, I don't know, be influenced by it. And what it all comes down to, a meme is an imitation. So an imitation, but a digital imitation requires reference. And without reference, an imitation kind of loses its, I don't know, it loses its impact. And so the reference, you can't have digital reference without using copyrighted material. So I believe that a meme, which is an imitation, should fall under collective commons for some reason. I don't know, what do you think? Whoa. Just saw a hummingbird outside, a really pretty hummingbird. Anyways, so patents only last 20 years, which encourages development and dissuades laziness. However, that there's no such thing for the big giant corporations that are like, well, we bought Star Wars, therefore you can't make Star Wars, even though the way the expanded universe built itself up. So I think the Star Wars expanded universe, one of the best ways to, I don't know, discuss the public domain and collective commons, because even though Star Wars was owned by George Lucas and Lucas Arts, this, the, I don't know, expanded universe universe was allowed to happen and George Lucas allowed it to happen. However, there's no such there's no such requirement for anyone to do that. Superman, Spider-Man, Dungeons and Dragons, all of these things that could be entering the public domain in the future have no requirement to do so unless the corporation feels like it. And we know that these corporations are going to be continuously pushing back the end date of their, I don't know, their contract of corporation as long as they can. And I don't really like that, but I also really want my parents who worked very, very hard to create art so that I could make money off of it and my children could make money off of it. I mean, they're making it as an investment thing. like. So uh, Tom Scott mentions Shakespeare. If everyone was not allowed to do Shakespeare, the world would be a very different place. But at the moment, no one's allowed to do Star Wars. And everyone, the media, loves to be like, oh, Star Wars is the modern myth. Yet you can't discuss it. It's, an, it's a corporation that's allowed to. The Church of Disney, which I made a video called The Church of Disney. You might, you might enjoy that. It's, it's not too good. But when I say it's not too good, it's not like very, very high quality production. But I think there's some neat ideas in there. So you might actually like my church of Disney video. So as far as copyright systems go, there's a whole like, do we grow it or is it established? Is it an ecosystem versus society? Is it nature versus nurture? Does, does free speech equal like free meme speech? Or memes are imitations, but an imitation requires reference, yet a digital reference, free speech free reference, free imitation, I'm not exactly sure. It, it requires, um, I was saying communal copyright, but that's completely wrong. It's collective commons or communal copyright, public domain, collective commons. Communal copyright is just my description of it. It's not an actual thing. It's just my description of what could be. So do memes evolve naturally with freedom or should no one ever get access to Mickey, Soups, Palpy, Star Wars, Star Trek, D&D, Warhammer, Call of Duty, Mario, Happy Birthday, Pokemon, anything like that. I'd love, a, I'd really, really, really love a world where my children could be like, I really like Pokemon. I'm gonna make the new Pokemon game or the new Call of Duty game, or I'm gonna make the new Monopoly BC Bud version. I mean, I could do that tomorrow potentially, or maybe not until 50 years after the copyright holder dies. 
but the copyright holder can be passed on when someone buys the copyright like Disney. <laughs> I don't know what to do. As a musician, I want to be selfish, but as a creator in the nerd community, I want everything to be free. I want the nerd community pop culture to be free. I don't want us to have these strict religions and doctrines that we have to follow. So anyways, thanks very much for watching. Hopefully the battery still lasted. This is the second time doing this ending, but hopefully it's still there. So thanks very much for watching. If you want me to do more discussions like this, then leave this video a like. A like helps me know what content you enjoy and what to make more of. Please subscribe for daily videos. I make at least one video every day. Could be sci-fi, could be fantasy, could just be a talk like this one-on-one. -on -one. So thanks very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you liked my rant and got something out of it. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. And screw you Tom Scott for making me like really, really obsessed with copyright again. I was ready to just like, I don't know, push through it and like put my nose to the grindstone and be like, ah, whatever. It doesn't matter. I'll fight through the system. I'll keep making good content. <laughs> but then, yeah, I just keep thinking about corporations as religion and yeah. So do individuals control memes or are memes pop culture that is I don't know, should memes get free speech? <laughs> should there be a limit to when you can have copyright? Should there not be a limit? Should there be a 20 year limit? Should it be 50 years after the death? Should Star Wars be something we can all start making new Star Wars characters of in, I don't know, a few more years? Or should we wait 50 years after George Lucas's death? It's all up in the air. This has been a crazy video. Hopefully you've enjoyed the rant and hopefully my battery hasn't died. I haven't checked it in a while. So hopefully this all got recorded. Thanks very much for watching. If you like this video, then please leave the video a like. A like really helps me understanding whether the content is doing well and people are enjoying this and want more. So leave me a like if you want more of this. I can do some more in-depth stuff. I've hit so many copyright like infringements and borders and not like Ooh, you're really, really messing with something illegal here, but like, I don't know, sometimes it's just more inconveniences that I can't sort out. But if you want me to discuss more of those inconvenient copyright claims, I'm willing to. So subscribe for daily videos. I make at least one video every day. Sometimes it can be sci-fi or fantasy, or sometimes it's just a talk with you and me. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in tomorrow's video. See ya!